Good afternoon. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, August 19th, 2016. First stop today, the Eastern Pacific. Tropical Storm K down here well to the southwest of the Baja. A little bit of moisture being pulled up maybe out from it, but really not much of an impact to the Baja Peninsula. This is forecast to turn eventually off to the northwest over this cooler water where it will dissipate and not pose any problems for Mexico or the Baja Peninsula specifically. And you can see farther down in the eastern Pacific here, no additional areas of note over the next few days, so that's good. Moving on into the Atlantic Basin where things are starting to get a lot more interesting and probably only going to grow from there. First of all, this is Tropical Storm Fiona out here in the open central Atlantic. Very easy to see that there are obviously some strong upper level winds blowing across the top of this system and I talk about that often when we discuss wind shear that the upper level winds need to fan out in all directions uh, in a clockwise motion in the western hemisphere the northern hemisphere and the western hemisphere <laughs> it's the northern hemisphere part that makes it clockwise there it's all opposite south of the equator and when it does that the cloud cover can fan out I mean you've seen what a mature hurricane looks like and this is far from it. In this case, uh, strong upper level winds blowing across, stringing the storm out, pulling it apart like cotton candy, and that is not very healthy. You can also see over here this large area of circulation. This is Invest Area 99L. This is the one that's going to cause uh, a lot of uh, interesting moments, I guess is a good way to put it. Over the next week to 10 days plus, I'll get into more details on that in just a moment. Gulf of Mexico nice and clear, Western Caribbean Central and Eastern all clear as well. Uh, the Western Atlantic just a few areas of convection. If you're headed to Bermuda by the way no worries from Fiona and I'll show you that here as I progress through. This is the tracking map. Forecast to reach depression strength or I guess downgrade to depression strength from where it is now over the next few days Upper level winds generally just not going to be favorable, so this will struggle throughout. There might be a period of time here and there where it has a burst of deep convection, and it may look like it's making a run at trying to intensify, but I don't think this is going to do much. So again, if you're headed to Bermuda over the next several days, I wouldn't worry about Fiona at all. Looking at the larger scale picture here, this is the latest from the Tropical Weather Outlook map, National Hurricane Center here. One area yellow, low chance of development uh, from a tropical wave coming off Africa. I'll show you a great satellite picture of that in a moment. And then we have our Invest Area 99L and its development area over the next few days. Interest here in the Caribbean Sea. Definitely need to keep an eye on this. As promised, this is the, I love this satellite shot. It's fantastic. It comes from the Naval Research Laboratory out in Monterey, I believe it is and you can really get an idea of the scale and the scope of what we're looking at and how large some of these weather features are. First of all, here's Fiona again, another perspective of that stretched out sort of bad hair day kind of look for Fiona and that's not a sign of intensification. This is interesting to me. Anytime I see this sort of S shape, it shows me that this is going to try to develop and this system over Africa curling up as well almost has an S shape to it both of these probably going to develop over time. This is a very large envelope of energy sitting in here and the European model really doesn't do much with it all the way out through seven days and that's not surprising. That model generally isn't the best for what we call tropical cyclogenesis or the birth and development of tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, the US generated models seem to do better especially in recent years the HWARF or the Hurricane Weather Research Forecast Model and we'll go over the intensities in a minute but when I see such a large area of energy here brewing over warm water headed towards land you know that makes me say alright well we definitely need to watch this one looking at the vorticity signature again these show me sort of the health of the systems and you can see Fiona despite the sheared appearance it still has a decent low-level vorticity signature here. And again, this is kind of like an x-ray. It certainly isn't at all the same process, but that's the way I like to think of it. You know, if you go in 
and you think you've got a bad chest cold and it might be pneumonia, they take an x-ray and they can see masses of infection or whatever it is in your lungs. You can tell I'm not a doctor, but you get the idea. It shows you the atmosphere in a different way. And in this way, we can see vorticity or energy in the atmosphere the same way an x-ray can show things that the physicians cannot see uh, normally just using the naked eye or in this case just satellite pictures alone. Now obviously a well-developed hurricane in a satellite picture is going to be round and it should have an eye and you know it's, it's very much round in appearance but when we're looking at struggling systems like Fiona you can come in and say well you know the vorticity is still there and then in the case of this system here 99L it's a much larger area of vorticity or energy trying to bundle itself together. You can even see off the Baja here, this is Tropical Storm K. So that's what these systems look like in the vorticity fields. So let's take a look at the model plots here for Fiona. Again, Bermuda interests right there is Bermuda. Yeah, a lot of the track forecasts kind of aim it towards Bermuda, but we're only talking about a small geographic area of land in the Atlantic. Yes, hurricanes do pass over or near Bermuda, but they're fairly rare overall and again I wouldn't worry about this too much and even if this were to somehow strengthen more than anticipated there's still plenty of time to watch and see what happens as this evolves but overall plans for Bermuda keep them it'll be just fine and if it's going to change you'll hear it from me definitely alright and, and to the intensity forecast here for Fiona uh, if you look at this is basically a gentle slope down, and you can see that as well as I can. And a couple of outliers here that try to develop it later, but the general forecast is for steady weakening under marginal to negative overall conditions in the Atlantic where this is located. And part of the problem for it is it's still embedded in the Saharan air layer regime, and that's not going to help. You can also see this S shape with 99L down here escaping and staying south of the Saharan air layer as this system will as well as it moves on westward so these two will be interesting to watch the wind shear this pattern is always changing we've got a lot more green now over parts of the Atlantic than we've had recently as the upper pattern begins to change this too will change fairly decent anticyclonic flow aloft so again that high pressure in the atmosphere is divergent it's spreading out the air is spreading out that's what divergent flow means it's not converging and sinking it's generally rising and spreading out especially way up high at the 200 millibar level and that is conducive to fostering tropical convection here certainly out over this area but there's really nothing to take advantage of it and again the overall pattern is changing you remember the last couple of days there was a lot more of these red lines in here than we're seeing now so we're headed towards a more favorable pattern for development overall. Got a uh, request to talk about the vertical instability on the YouTube comments recently. And so this is the time series plot. The line here that I'm going to outline in yellow is your climatological norm. This is where it should be over the past you know, 100 years or so, however long they've been tracking this. That's where the vertical instability uh, should be. And what that means uh, basically is the stability of the atmosphere. An unstable atmosphere promotes much more thunderstorm activity and thunderstorms, the convection drives tropical cyclones and the lack of instability means simply a more stable atmosphere usually because of dry air or warm air aloft sort of capping things and you can see it's been below average for the entire hurricane season made a run almost to the average point there this was not far off at all but look recently you can see the abatement of the Saharan air layer definitely taking notice here as the trend has been up over the last several days whether or not it gets up into here we'll have to wait and see if it matches the climatological norm but it really won't matter too much because these systems are going to push west and then they're probably going to develop later and that's the problem because that's where people live and we can see that on the GFS 700 millibar uh, humidity uh, and height chart here basically uh, it's kinda hard to see what's what this would be uh, North Carolina there's Florida for example and uh, this is the Eastern Caribbean here 
west coast of Africa over here. And for uh, you know comparative purposes, this is Fiona, and this is Invest Area 99L. Well, what does all this mean? Well, the green is again sort of your go. That's the way I look at it. More humidity in the green and moisture, and you can see the relative humidity values here are pretty strong with Invest Area 99L. Not so much here because of the Saharan air intrusion and entrainment into this system with Fiona. So this large area of moisture here encompassing not only 99L but the system coming off Africa, this tells me we have to watch this because these pieces of energy mean business as they head off to the west. So the vertical instability isn't ideal but it's not completely limiting uh, and it's probably going to mean that these systems wait until later to develop and then they're already close to land for example the Eastern Caribbean. So the forecast plots as of this early afternoon 499L you can see again there it is that fairly straightforward west-northwest track interest here in the Lesser Antilles US British Virgin Islands all the way down uh, to portions of the central to southern windward islands I think south of here probably going to be okay this is already at 10 degrees north latitude or so and moving generally remember west is 270 uh, on the compass on you know if you're talking about bearing and so this is moving just north of due west probably 275 degrees or something like that and so interest here Guadeloupe Dominica, you name it. You remember last year with Erica, we have to watch this <clears throat> not just for the threat of it potentially becoming a tropical storm, hopefully not a hurricane, but we need to realize the impact and I think the people down here definitely get it. That rain and squally weather is almost a guarantee unless this just dissipates and beyond that we can worry about it as time goes on. Now that being said, this is the very latest intensity guidance and it's interesting that some of the statistical guidance here very aggressive in making this a hurricane but I'm also intrigued that the H wharf sitting in here and it's done really well at intensity forecasting as of late also makes this a hurricane so the trend is generally upward the global model here the AVN which is the GFS if I understand it correctly uh, not so much you know barely a tropical storm here beyond the day five time frame but overall the guidance envelope for intensity is up so again to reiterate you folks here in the Eastern Caribbean you're first up to deal with this even if it stays a vigorous tropical wave you will have impacts from it unless it just goes away and they usually don't do that this on the other hand we'll just watch probably gonna come off far enough north that it'll eventually take a ride out to sea that's at least my interpretation as of now as for what happens with this system well too many days ahead to know uh, obviously there's gonna be a lot of different computer forecasts uh, maps and whatnot published I mentioned this in my blog just be wary of those you're gonna see eight ten day graphics posted from people that wanna get excitement going and maybe get more website clicks or Facebook likes or who knows but just realize those are long-range forecasts and that's subject to a lot of variability you know the interaction between other systems in the atmosphere it's all so complex that try to ignore that and as I said in my blog just kinda of look at it and go oh, okay you know for example if you see somebody post a map and it shows a big hurricane coming right into the Gulf uh, Coast states ten days from now don't worry about it just say oh I you know may it, I, maybe I should prepare a little better if something's out there uh, you know I might want to be prepared in case it comes my way don't let it make you worry especially with what's going on in Louisiana the folks down there obviously they don't need a hurricane right now but anybody posting graphics that show something heading their way far out into the future weather wise is quite frankly socially irresponsible because there's no need for that anxiety right now when the time comes if it comes we'll let people know we'll do the best we can to get them ready and they will too so until then watch everything see what's happening with it stay on top of it most weather geeks love this kind of stuff they don't like the outcome we don't like misery and you know the humanity of uh, suffering but the fascination with us at least keeps us aware and I think that's a very good thing so that we can stay on top of it and be ready if something nasty comes our way 
All right, well, that's all I've got for today. Again, I am Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. As always, I very much appreciate your time and attention here. I'll be back with more for you over the weekend.